You're listening to the Dan Bongino Show. Filling in for Dan, here's Mary Walter. Thank you. Yes, Mary Walter filling in for Dan Bongino and so excited to be with you. You can join me a little later coming up here at 844-484-3872. You can also tweet on me at Mary Walter Radio, getting some of your, trying to respond to them, and we'll try to get your comments in on the air as well. First, let's talk about branding. Let's talk about political campaigns and what's happening to some of them. We've got one that is spiraling, looks like it's spiraling, and one that looks like it's rising. Here to discuss, Mark Rudolph. He's a branding advisor to CEOs. He is a speaker, a columnist, and he is the author of three books, Intra Branding, Brand is Destiny, and Be Unique or Be Ignored. You can find him at Mark Rudolph TV, and it's M-A-R-C-R-U-D-O-V TV, or at MarkRudolph.com. Mark, welcome to the Dan Bongino Show. Hi. It's great to be here, Mary. And by the way, that's MarkRudolph.TV. Oh, dot TV. Okay, dot, dot TV. TV. That's dot where TV. all my TV and radio videos are. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you for that. Uh, so what's happening to the Ron DeSantis campaign? It, it, what is, that? is Is it me or do we go to like, oh, yeah, Ron DeSantis, Ron DeSantis. And I'm like, wow, he's really going to challenge Trump. And I like them both. And and whoever the, the candidate is, that's who I'm going to vote for, you know, because I can't have Kamala Harris as president. I, ju- I just can't. So I'm going to vote for, you know, it looked like it was going to be one or the other. Now. Ron DeSantis is like gone. He didn't tur- show up. He was invited to uh, the Turning Point Action Conference in West Palm Beach. He didn't show up. Vivek Ramaswamy showed up. Asa Hutchinson also uh, attended. Trump was there. He didn't show up. What is going on with DeSantis's campaign? That's a really good question. It is not going to go any farther than it is. Um, he started with a lousy launch on Twitter spaces. Yes. Yes, I forgot about that. Right. And he never moved beyond that. Now, to be fair, back on November 15th, Trump's launch was also terrible. Mm -hmm. Uh, The day before that, I was on Newsmax advising Trump to speak for 15 minutes, followed by Q&A. Well, he spoke for an hour. It was a terrible speech. It was just god awful. But he recovered from it. He also recovered from Kanye West. DeSantis never recovered from Twitter spaces, and there are a number of reasons why. He is a prodigy of Donald Trump. Yes. And he wouldn't be there were it not for Donald Trump. So there's a big disloyalty factor there. He's also in a constant fight with Uh, Trump, who is beloved by the MAGA base. When you're tearing down Donald Trump, you're just not going to go anywhere if you expect votes. And so when you look at his small small donor base, which is about 15 percent, that shows that he has a weak brand because the the brand comes from the grassroots, not from the donor class. And the donor class is not exactly happy with him either. either. I mean, Rupert Murdoch was a big supporter of DeSantis, and now he is looking for Yunkin in Virginia. And Ken Griffin, who's the CEO of uh, now Miami-based Citadel, a billionaire Republican, he's looking at Tim Scott instead of uh, DeSantis, which makes no sense to me because Tim Scott has no chance at all. No, I don't so think so. It, I, he's it, a great it, guy. I, th- I think he's right. he's capable as far as maybe a cabinet position or something along those lines. Even VP, not presidential material. You ha- there's a certain it factor you have to have to be president. Yeah, well, uh, DeSantis doesn't. He, he doesn't. He, you know, he has that as the governor. But and I've said this before on Newsmax, and I'm, as you probably know, I'm a regular on Newsmax. But he puts too much emphasis on woke culture, which is important, but not enough on economics where most people are concerned. They are also concerned with the woke culture. But as I've illustrated before, DeSantis has no foreign experience or expertise. The world is a tinderbox right now. We're on the verge of World War III. And we can't put a guy in there who has no experience dealing with world problems. So that's always been a problem. You know, DeSantis started all of this with a book tour. 
and he pretended that he that he was not running for president. So that was a bit disingenuous. And if you remember, Mike Pompeo did the same thing. And then he realized he's not going anywhere, so he didn't even throw his hat into the ring. The other thing is that despite all the money that DeSantis has amassed, he just had to fire at least 10 people from his staff to cut expenses. So he's, his message just isn't resonating. And again, I'm looking at the small donor base, which is 15% of his of composite donor um, money funds. Right. And it's, it's, a, it's a very small number. And if you want to be president, you have to excite the little people, not right. just the donor class. And you and you also made a point, you know, he's he learned from Trump. He's like he's like Trump light. So it's like when you're a kid and you really like Frosted Flakes, but your parents tell them you, they're too expensive. So they buy the store brand cereal Frosted Flakes and they give them to you and tell you it's the same thing. Right. It, it, like, yeah, it's good. But I really want Tony the Tiger. Like ki- kids are like, ah, I really want Tony the Tiger. Why, why can I have that? So to me, I, I get that. I get that he can only go so him, far. I would call him Trump very, very light. Right. Because he doesn't have the foreign experience. True. But uh, but but I don't know. I, and I'm going to I'm just going to say to you here. I don't know if the never Trumpers care about that. They just don't want Trump. So they look at Ron DeSantis as the acceptable alternative. They give him he gives them the America first that they want. He says the thing this, that Trump says, but he's nicer in the way that he says them. And they like Florida and they like what's happening in Florida. So that foreign experience. You know, we also, we said the same thing with Trump, although Trump did business deals around the world. You can say the same thing, but to the never Trumpers, I think Ron DeSantis is a much more acceptable alternative. But even they seem to have just capped off their interest with him. And he's just well, I, was, I was just going to say, if the never Trumpers were significant, then his poll numbers would be high. But right. the never Trumpers are not significant. Right. So they, they me- might have big mouths, but they they don't have much power. Right. So now let's go to someone, someone whose campaign is rising. And that's Vivek Ramaswamy. He is now tied with Ron DeSantis for second place behind Trump, according to a a survey that was released Thursday by Kaplan Strategies. Uh, He went from the bottom tier to tying for second place. He's got double digit support alongside uh, DeSantis. Now, Trump's still leading 36 points ahead. But still, that's pretty interesting to see that from Ramaswamy, who most people never would have known, never knew his name before, didn't know how to pronounce it. I'm still not quite sure how to pronounce his first name. Uh, so what what is he doing right that has him now going from the bottom at like one or two percent to now tied with DeSantis in second place? Well, first of all, he he says that his name is pronounced Vivek. Vivek. Like okay, thank cake. You. He says it like cake. It's Vivek. Okay. Ramaswamy. Okay. okay. He is not competing with Trump. He's competing with Ron DeSantis. Well, Vivek Ramaswamy is not going to be president, and he knows it. Right. But what's interesting about him is he doesn't have a disloyalty problem because he came out of nowhere. And he put, according to him, $100 million of his own money into the campaign. He never attacks Trump calls him a friend the only thing the only negative that he actually uttered about trump was that he said that 30 percent of the country becomes psychiatrically ill when trump is in the white house and he says i'm saying that as trump's friend but that's i wouldn't really call that an attack i would call that as a fact right i was gonna say it's it's true Yes, I would I would say that what Vivek is doing is he's angling for a cabinet cabinet position. Now, he says he claims that he's not, but they all say that. I guarantee you that after Trump wins the nomination and he says, Vivek, I want you to be VP or whatever, Vivek's not going to say no. Right. But the thing is, let's say four years from now, Vivek wants to run again. He still, like DeSantis will not have any foreign policy experience. He needs that, and he can get it if he works for Trump. Now, other things about... uh, The other thing is the people, the voters, don't expect 
is they could beat Trump. So they're not angry at him. And again, because he's never attacked Trump, they're not angry at him. And that's part of why his poll numbers are rising. He's bold. He wants to eliminate the Department of Education. He wants to fire lots of civil service employees. He wants to gut the uh, DOJ and the FBI. And he wants to raise the voting age, which I think is interesting, to 25, yeah. except for people in the military, first responders, and anybody under 25 who can pass the same civics test that immigrants have to pass, which would require a constitutional amendment. On the other hand, the Democrats want to lower the voting age to 16. Why? Because they want dumbbells who are lefties to vote. That's why the border is open. They're looking for as many undocumented Democrats as they can find. That's what Rush Limbaugh used to call right. them, and that's pretty accurate. Um, um, he, he was, and finally, he was able to raise money from a, at least 40,000 donors to qualify for the debate, which means he is resonating from the small donor voters. So that's why he is rising for all of the reasons that I just mentioned. Okay, quickly, one minute. Would you tell Trump to debate in the first debate or not take part? Yeah, that's an interesting question. I can understand why Trump said he doesn't want to vote, excuse me, excuse me, to debate, because his lead is so great. He's asking himself, why should I bother? I have to debate with people right. who have 1%. That's, uh, I'm just lowering myself. But Trump is always negotiating. Yes. So now what Fox News is doing is that they're desperate because they know that if Trump's not there, the audience won't be there either. So I think Trump is playing a game and he wants Rupert Murdoch literally on his knees begging Trump to debate. And he likes the adulation he's getting from please, 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 Donnie, won't you won't you debate? So I don't really know what he's going to do. I, I see pros and cons. I'm not really sure at this point where I come down on it, but okay. he kind of looks he kind of looks like an elitist if he doesn't. Right. And he kind of looks like he's wasting his time if he does. Right. So I think what I think I would wait for my personal decision based on what the dynamics are, let's say a week before the debate. But um, okay. yeah. you know, he's in the driver's seat. Yeah, that's very he true. Can, he can he can do whatever he wants to. So Yeah. It'll be interesting to see what he decides to do. Mark Rudolph, thank you so much for joining us. It's M A R C Rudolph R U D U V dot T V. R U D O V. O V. I'm sorry. Um, I'm rushing. M A R C R U D O V dot T V. Also, Mark Rudolph dot com. Thank you so much for joining me. It's been my pleasure, Mary. Thanks so much.